called the match. Andre the Giant took the ticket to Andre. He called the, the battle royal that took place uh, in the pre-show. You, JR, and Byron Saxton. I don't know why Saxton was out there, but you and JR and <laughs> Saxton were uh, were out there ringside. He had a great, a great ovation from the fans when they introduced uh, you and you and JR. And it was great to, to hear you on a, a WrestleMania telecast. Well, it was it was cool in the fact that uh, you know what the, I think the whole thing was seven hours long from the I mean the official start of uh, of WrestleMania during the you know the pre-show the kickoff show the matches and all this stuff we Jr and I did the first the first the match the first match was the Andre the Giant Battle Royal and Jr like I said Jr and myself and and Byron did that um, but what was so what was so amazing. Was the place was it was, I think we started our our match started around four twenty five four thirty or something like that, which the show actually came on at like four. They had opened the doors at two thirty, and it was unbelievable. It was up uh, the place was almost packed at four thirty. It was perfect. Yeah, it was it was like it was almost packed. It was a what a what a unbelievable uh, whole week that was down there in New Orleans. I mean, it was just it was unbelievable. Yeah, it was. Uh, I enjoyed the paper. I thought it was one of the best WrestleManias ever until after Rousey's match. I think it peaked at Ronda Rousey and then had a steady decline. But I, it was building to be one of the best WrestleManias that I ever seen. But then I think the, I think the fans, I think I just got exhausted. I just tapped out. Uh, <laughs> it just was like I became cynical. I came because I was just so tired about watching wrestling for seven hours and you take in the hall of fame which was what, five hours you take in the nxt i watched that was three hours then you have raw and then smackdown last night i mean that's three five that's 12 that's i mean that's almost 20 hours of wrestling in one two three f- five days four days <laughs> yeah well i mean you know that's our that's the super bowl for for wwe so that only that that kind of stuff only happens once a year but i mean just just seven hours of wrestlemania matches to for the people to sit through all of those but let me let me just ask you well you said yourself you thought it was like the best wrestlemania ever but i know because i know what a big ronda rousey fan you are was that match not like a thousand times better than you thought it would be or or I mean, it was for me. I mean, I thought, you know, I was, I was, I was a little worried about that. I, it, I, was, it was great. I was worried too, um, but she was terrific. I think she. Oh man, she was great. She came out and did everything that she was supposed to do, and I think you know, hats off to Triple H and Kurt Angle, who are the veterans, you know, who are the you know Hall of Fame wrestlers that they are, for handling that match. And I think Stephanie, I think all four of them did. Terrific! Yeah. It was a great. It's like I said, a thousand times better than I was yeah. expecting it to be. Now, now, King, we talked about Jim Cornette being upset with you know the um, he's probably upset with the fireball the to the penis, but <laughs> right. how about a ten year old kid being Raw Tag Team Champ? I mean, that has to be Cornette has to be having an aneurysm. Yeah, and you know what I I don't know whose idea that was or or, or whatever, but. <laughs> That was that was maybe one of the few things that I might not have, uh, not that I didn't necessarily agree with, but I just didn't understand yet. I mean, there may be some more reason for it, but I just I didn't really understand that. Well, he's the son of a referee. Yeah, that's what I heard, yeah, John Cohn. Yeah, I, I didn't I I didn't know that. No, you know, it's funny. I don't think I don't know how many people in the company even knew that. Uh, until after it happened or whatever, but uh, I thought it was a Make a Wish. I thought it was a, a live <laughs> oh, man. Make hey, a Wish. You know, you know what? Uh, this is. I did see a tweet that said, uh, "What's it? What's the little boy's name?" Nicholas. <clears throat> Nicholas. Nicholas Cone is ten years old, and he's won more titles in the WWE than Jerry Lawler oh, or Jake Snake Robertson. I saw Robertson. that too. <laughs> did you see that? Yeah. Oh well. What are you going to say? Nicholas is 1-0 at WrestleMania, and Jerry Lawler's 0-1. Yeah, you're right. So we got to have Nicholas versus Jerry Lawler next year at WrestleMania. To... <laughs> God. But, no, that was uh, that was kind of really look, I think I'm out, there do- I'm out there doing the uh, – uh, we're right in the middle of doing the 
Andre the Giant Battle Royal, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I'm just saying something or whatever. And I looked down at my phone, and here's a uh, text from Michael Cole saying, don't be afraid to mention your resume name match. <laughs> <laughs> What a jerk, huh? <laughs> somebody, somebody did say that uh, during the telecast, reminded that Cole was 0-1. I, I think it was Graves or somebody mentioned, oh, Cole, you're 1-0 at WrestleMania undefeated. Oh, yeah, he loves to mention that. <laughs> God, jeez. All right, so you're, uh, so WrestleMania, I mean, so that was the only thing to WrestleMania. Did you hang around or? or uh, not, during, not during the entire thing. Yeah. I wanted to get back to the after party. You had a couple guys uh, that were – you know, uh, Gary Barnage and yeah. uh, Angela Williams waiting for me at the uh, after party. How was the after party? Yeah, so you know, I go every year for at least, at least for that with you. I, I go to I go to that thing. But was it a every year? It seems to get more and less. It gets less and less more wild. And less. <laughs> well, it, it, more and it, this was even less and less wild again. Did they I don't know. I think I think something that you know. I think a few years ago we talked about this. It's like they're they're they keep trying to condense it down to just talent and their families. Yeah. And when you get, when you get it down to just talent and their families, and I, you know, there's nothing, nothing wild is going to be going on. It's just, uh, I don't know. It's just, yeah, this was, this was, um, I mean, it was good, you know, but it just turns out to be just a, everybody that just, I don't know. You just sit around and talk about, what you know, the show that just went on is not like nothing, nothing unusual to talk about. And you, and you eat at least the food's good. You eat, oh, the food's good, yeah. Yeah. So, I'm, yeah, I'm sad that I missed some of that stuff and the after party and all that, but just. Uh... Oh, and the other, the other thing, I, I loved um, the Undertaker coming back. I thought that was done great. <sighs> What you didn't like it? I want a biker taker. I wanted to hear the revving. Oh, of the that engine. wasn't gonna happen. You know, vroom, vroom, vroom. Vroom. No, no biker taker. Never again. <laughs> he looked great though. I, he looked in great yeah, shape, man. Absolutely did. That's what a new hip does to you. And John Cena, he's the, he's the best man. He's a good guy. <laughs> John Cena sitting in the crowd as a fan, <laughs> watching half the pay per view. I'm like, man, he's gonna sit for the whole thing. Just sit there and watch the whole pay per view as a fan. But it was great. He <laughs> jumped the barricade, ran up, ran up the ramp to when he was told that Undertaker was going to be there. It was he was terrific. Cena was great. Yeah, yeah, it was good. 